Beautiful strike. And he's done it. Welcome to the highlights of the second day of this Cornhill Test match at Trent Bridge. And it was a murky sort of day. The clouds stayed around all day long, but we still had plenty of excitement and we still had quite a bit of frustration as well. Some good, hard, fighting Test match cricket and a little bit of mediocre stuff to throw in with it. Well, let's take you back to the start of play. 33 for four, the Australians were when they came out. And you remember that Kim Hughes yesterday evening was out of the last ball of the day to Bob Willis. Alan Border, with nothing against his name there, has come out to join Trevor Chappell, who is on five. And here's Mike Hendrick now coming in from the pavilion end, 51 for four Australia. He's bowling to the left-hander, Alan Border. In the commentary box, we have Tom Graveney, Mike Smith, and your first commentator will be Christopher Martin Jenkins. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And uh, it was going possibly to first slip but uh, Downton seemed to have it safely and uh, down to earth possibly because he tried to throw the ball up as he caught it and that uh, a very unfortunate moment for Paul Downton in his first test match in England and that's another one gone down Hendrick diving to his left at third slip and it was a no ball so it's a false alarm <laughs> and that one's through the breakthrough that England have threatened for so long Chances have gone a begging, but no mistake about that one at all. A ball of fuller length was the one that did it for Mike Hendrick. And Chappell's tough little innings, never really looking established in any way, but a gritty little effort is over. Bowled by Hendrick for 17. brilliant effort by Downton who was the, the man guilty of one of those uh, missed chances got across there very quickly and got his glove underneath it but uh, Bill Alley uh, judging quite rightly I think that, that was off the bat the England captain off Bob Willis over Botham's head at second slip and uh, that is the fourth chance that England have put down you see here Alan Border gives himself a bit of room slashes hard and it goes very fast and a very awkward difficult catch for Ian Botham at second slip and the pace of the ball forces itself through his hands and it goes for runs. Well, there uh, are the uh, catches that Ian Botham has held in his 36 tests. 43 of them, a fairly high striking rate. He's a very fine catcher of the ball, especially his second slip, but uh, they've evaded him in this match. That was no doubt about it. Off the middle of the bat, Marsh is clearly going to attack Hendrick and try and uh, knock him off his length. And he picked that one up very well indeed. So now with uh, Mike Hendrick to resume from the pavilion end. Marsh swinging that high, ball underneath it. Oh, and that's not quite. Well, if uh, England lose his first Cornhill Test match, they're going to look back at this day of uh, chances and half chances going a-begging. That one 
pulled up high into the Nottingham sky. Wilma setting off after it, not wasting any time. And really speaking, he never really got, never quite got there, and it was a desperately difficult, difficult chance in any case. And that's put away well by Alan Border. Characteristic stroke from him. And the first time for a long time that he's really punched one away like that. It's uh, well in the air, but it's gone away from the close infielders to the mid wicket boundary. I don't think he quite got that uh, in the middle of the bat, but he got it well enough. Boycott, deep fine leg, and he's got it, safe hands, Jeffrey, Rodney Marsh is gone for 19, caught Boycott by Willis, and good work tactically there, Willis on for that extra over to have a go at Rod Marsh. It went up a very, very long way, and there it goes. But it was beautifully judged by Jeffrey Boycott there. Beautifully balanced. No problems at all. And as in anything you do at sport, his head was lovely and still there when he caught that. He made no mistake at all. 23 to border, who with uh, Kim Hughes is just about the most experienced player in this side. <laughs> No third man. And Dilly doing the fielding. Jeff Lawson, away to the mid-wicket boundary. One hundred comes up for Australia, one hundred and three for six now. And he's gone right into the midriff of Gar. Seven down for 110, the end of Lawson for 14, and Botham, in his second over, has done the trick. And in the background there, you can see the smile of relief on him, Botham's face. At last, something's gone right for him. And here comes a swinging half volley. You can see the ball swinging in the air there. And Jeff Lawson not quite getting his front foot to it and hitting it straight to David Gower at square cover. And the prospect of that famous dismissal, Lily caught Willie Bow Dilly here. If that is, he can add to those figures of one for 20 so far. Well, not quite out of the textbook, but effective. Jeff Boycott after it. And Lily coming back for the third and getting there safely. field for England they seem to be having difficulty sighting this ball in the crowd the light at the moment is pretty good <laughs> a 
And that's past boycott this time. And it'll go all the way. Plenty of right hand from Lily in that shot. All well pitched up to him and uh, making the most of it. shot beating Gower and Dilly is the man going around from deep third man and that is just about of course for the England feeling today Dilly away there at uh, deep point tried to get his foot to it and the ball ran over the top of his foot Right, 139 for seven now, and I've wondered why this hasn't been done before, to come around the wicket to Allen Border. I know Bob Willis did it with just a few deliveries early on, but those footmarks outside the off stump at both ends must have some effect on the stroke play of the left-hander, particularly the way the LBW law is at the moment. Not if you bowl it halfway down the pitch. Yeah. And this is a good shot by Alan Border. But really there has been some, what can I say, very disappointing bowling from England in the last 25 minutes or so. Direction and length has all been lacking. And that really just about sums it up, that delivery. You know, uh, I, I don't know what uh, what's going on out there. It's there's no control nothing at all he just tries to fire it in again having been hit for four and it's wide down the leg side no chance for Paul Downton not a great deal of intelligence being shown out there I'm afraid and that's it that's the breakthrough they had to get 147 for eight now and Lily's done a good job he took the score along from 110 along to 147 with Alan Border. It's now 147 for eight. And Lily has caught Downton, bowled Dilly. That's a very handy partnership, that one. And as much as the Australians could have expected from Dennis Lilly. And at last, we've got the right line and the right length. And Dennis Lilly pushing forward, getting an edge, and Paul Downton taking the catch. But, as Richie has said, a very, very valuable 37 runs these two have put on. Not a bad crowd here today, considering the conditions and the interruptions. A lot of people in overcoats. It hasn't been all that warm. The rain came down, about three hours lost. And they're still there, they've hung in there for this uh, last sunny period. Seven, the deficit now, and uh, the Australian dressing room will be a much happier place than uh, it was earlier in the day. Needed uh, someone. Trevor Chapel played well, showed a lot of heart for his 17, but it needed Marsh or someone to come in and fling the bat. That's the way it worked out. Uh, it still left the England bowling figures looking very impressive. Dilly, who's bowling now, two for 33 in 18 overs. <laughs> uh, 
And that's Alan Border's half century. And I've seen him make uh, quite a few runs since the time he came into the Australian side. I'm not too sure that uh, he'll ever play a more valuable innings than that. Certainly not one of his quickest, but in the context of this match, it uh, could turn out to be absolutely priceless. 153 balls he's faced. Good shot, nice placement. Peter Woolley doing the chasing there. strike now he's not off the mark and he won't get off the mark Jeffrey Boycott takes his second catch of the innings it's 153 for nine and uh, actually that could turn out to be a very good wicket as far as the Australian fast bowlers are concerned touch of irony there that Boycott too may have to come out and face Lily and Hogg and Alderman as the man to take the catch Hog out without scoring. 153 for nine. Dilly takes another wicket, but still 25 minutes to play. And there, that pitch is right up in the rough, and Rodney Hogg clipping it off his legs, bobs it very gently to Jeff Boycott, who makes no mistake with things like that. And that's Dilly's third wicket. that it is getting very difficult to see. He's the one who'll be watching Graham Dilly and the ball going through the air towards border. He's the one who come up to Bill Alley and say, well, I didn't quite see that one. Let's go off. Field is in to save the single. that one too well. The umpire Constance making his way straight into the bowling end. He's had a look at his light meter just to check on how the thing is. That's short of Gooch at first slip. There's the single to all that on board at once. could be that those slips have been a little deep all day I think you're absolutely right there Richie there's no doubt that a tremendous number of deliveries have pitched just in front of the slips there must have been half a dozen today which are very nearly carried and really they take their position the slips take their position from the wicketkeeper and uh, I must say Paul Downton's taken two or three on their bounds as well a change in the attack now Bob Willis is replacing Graham Dilley from the pavilion end and with the clock almost on 10 to 7 there's no chance that England will have to back tonight Honestly, I don't think Alan Border picked that up <laughs> that one up terribly well. It wasn't one of his best strokes, but at the same time, the light is not terribly good at the moment.
Terry Alderman has two balls to face now from Bob Willis. Umpire David Constant is um, just coming up now to have a little look. But umpire Bill Alley at the bowler's end is um, singularly unmoved. That was a good delivery. But also a no ball. And... Uh, it's almost unplayable, certainly for a bowler, a bowler who is uh, coming in as far down the list as Terry Alderman. good out there now. Just some five minutes to go, 158 for nine. 56 border and Alderman's made one. <coughs> one for 25, Ian Botham. Certainly looked to be nothing wrong with his action, but his direction has uh, strayed a little towards uh, the last few overs. And uh, almost on cue, he's uh, given us the wide. Twenty-six the difference between the two teams now after almost two days of play. Peter Woolley out at deep point. So Border can keep the strike, just trusting Alderman to hang on for one more delivery. It's quite a difference in uh, the scoring rates of the two sides. England 54 runs per 100 balls, Australia 34. And the over rates are much the same. for the batsman to see and the umpires but Graham Gooch has just managed to get the fingertips to that in what must be one of the worst fielding days England have had for a long long time and a very good delivery this Ian Botham got the line right there it's moved off the scene and he really doesn't hardly touches it at all but uh, in his defence, I will say the the light is not very good at all, but the England fielding today has been pretty abysmal. And the two umpires now, I think they're they're saying that uh, they've had enough. It's too dark. Graham Gooch has had enough, and so too has Alan Border. He was quite happy to leave. The umpires asked him if he wanted to stay on or go off and he said uh, let's get off two minutes to go in the schedule of playing times Alan Border 57 not out in 233 minutes just 19 runs behind Australia at the close of the second day but not many runs scored in those two days 280 in the first 133 today with time lost for rain it looks to me as though there'll certainly be a result now we thought there would yesterday evening but uh, we've just about finished two innings now and there are still three days to go. Give us some uh, decent weather, and uh, I think you'll find that one of these two sides will be one up after this match. 